mission. One of them is hard cell technology. As you can see on one popular banner on the left on my left hand side, this is a demonstration how it would look like. But now we are not focusing on the appearance. We're going to talk about the technical details about hard cell. So a few key points at the very beginning. Hard cell is a very easy upgrade to push the solar panel out for about 10 watts to have a high power solution. It is cost competitive and it is, let me emphasize, it is very reliable. Jingdu is one of the leading company, one of the leading industrial leader to develop hard cell technology. So many people are asking, hey Alex, what is hard cell? It's hard cell sort of a black magic that Gino Solar, Gino Solar developed to boost the solar panel, to put, boost the power of solar panel. My answer is no. We are not developing a new technology just for fun. I don't think it is fun. We do it because we think we can provide a better economic value. Let me give you some background about half cell. Half cell is originated from a theoretical idea. I think many of you are, come, uh, are coming from Singapore. So half cell, this idea is originated in series. Singapore uh, Renewable Energy Research Institute. So I have a, because I'm from an IMD background, one of my former uh, workmates, he's working in Singapore. One day he built in Malaysia to split the solar cell into half and reduce the, uh, the series resistance. He found that you can boost the solar, solar panel um, power by easy, easily by 5 watt. So this is what it will look like. Many people are concerned about the reliability of half cell. So we are going to discuss how half cells are made. When you have a 6 inch solar cell, you have a full piece of a square silicon wafer. What half cell is doing is to flip the cell to its back side, expose the back side to, um, to, to, the, to the laser. You use infrared laser, laser to cut the solar cell into half and snap it. So no mechanical damage and no electrical damage. Um, this is basically what half cells are made. You will split the cell into half and that's all it is. There's no additional process to half cell. Basically, from the solar cell structure point of view, half cell, it is the same as a, cell, as a full cell in the cross section point of view, even though you split the cell into half. I know it's sort of a bit confusing, but the take-home message is that the solar cell structure is the same, only the dimension is different. So let me introduce you a few key, key highlights about hard cell, the key benefit from hard cell. Number one, do, can you see? When you split the solar cell into half, if you have electrical engineering background, then you'll be able to tell that the current density of the solar cell is reduced by half. As a result, you reduce the series resistance of the cell and you improve the solar cell efficiency. And consequently, your solar panel power is easily boosted by at least 5 watts to 10 watts. Second, improved shading tolerance. That will ensure you have a higher power and reduce the occurrence of, of the hotspot. This is very important when somebody is uh, developing rooftop residential systems. But the most important thing is the reduced temperature coefficient. As we mentioned at the first part, temperature coefficient refers to how much energy you will lose at a high temperature. This is highly relevant to, South, um, to Southeast Asia. So now let's go through these um, key features one by one. Shading tolerance. Imagine when you have a solar panel, a full cell solar panel, and a half cell solar panel. Each of them, they are labeled as 330 watt. So if you can see clearly that the electrical circuit is different. For the half cell, you can sort of um, consider the half cell module is um, constructed by two sub modules, one on the one on the top and the other one on the bottom. The top module is in parallel to the bottom uh, sub module, so that implies the top module is not influencing influencing the bottom module. But in comparison, the full cell module, everything is in one piece. There is no top sub-module and there is no bottom sub-module. It is a united one-module. So, 
What happens when you shake the module? When you shake one part, one um, when you shake half the module, half cell, it is still able to generate like uh, half of the power output. So 50% of 330 is more than 65 watt. About full cell module, you will get zero power output if you shake the solar panel into half. Because in series, uh, in series, in series, if everything is in series, one cell will affect the rest of the module. If the, if one of the cells is completely shaded, uh, I put a put on my hand here so that we can have a little demonstration. As I found it, it is uh, more useful. If you can see, there's a solar panel, a half cell panel here. If you shake this part of the half cell panel. The top half is unimpacted. That is saying the top half is still generating at least 100% capacity, even, even though the bottom half is generating, is generating none. But if you imagine the entire thing, they are using full cell rather than half cell. So all these solar cells, they are connected in series. If you shake half of the solar, of, of, of the solar panel, the entire thing will generate zero power. So this is one of the very important key features for hard cell modules. If you might expect some shading from your project side, which is hardly can be hardly avoided completely, you will have some shading at some time. So the second key feature is the temperature coefficient. For most of the full cell module, you will be expecting a temperature coefficient about 0.4%. Per degree Celsius. For half cell module, you'll be expecting 0.37% per degree Celsius. Uh, you don't have to take any of these pictures. I will circulate this uh, presentation to all of you so you can have a reference when you get home. So, what is the implication of the difference in the, in the temperature coefficient? So, this is a, the, power, the power curve and, uh, as a function of the temperature. Um, I have a demonstration for a hard cell module and a full cell module. They are all at 100% power at room temperature. That is 25 degrees C, if you can see it on the, on the graphic on the screen. When the temperature goes up, both of the modules are declining the power. But you can see on the graph, the blue curve always features a higher power output than the red curve. That is the difference from the difference of the from the difference of the temperature coefficient. Um, normally in Malaysia, I guess in the middle of summer, it could reach up at about forty degrees in the, in the middle of the day, and at that time, your solar your, your, your solar panel is about twenty five degrees hotter than your ambient temperature, so that is about sixty five degrees. At sixty five degrees C, your half cell module will be still featuring about 85% of its name of our uh, design uh, plate power. But for your full cell module, it features about 20 82.5%. Uh, so that is saying even though the name plate power is the same for half cell module and full cell module, but in the actual operation, half cell module will feature 2.5% more in terms of the energy unit. So that is a, a very important feature if you are developing a utility project. So how do we translate all these technical terms to what we can understand in financial analysis in terms of uh, LCOE? So that's an average cost of electricity and IRR. So I have done a simulation to show you how to choose the right technology. People ask me, hey Alex, we have so many technology, we have so many different module types, but which is the right one? How do you make your best recommendation? So this is one of the easy guidelines. When the power difference is better than the price difference, this is where you should start considering the high power module. So this might be more familiar for some of you. LCOD. If you look at the graph, you will, find, you will be able to find that hot cell is always featured a lower LCOE than its full cell counterpart and featuring a higher IRR than its full cell counterpart. So, before the talk, I got some questions from some of you asking what was your best recommendation in 2018 and 2019. I tell them 
a hard cell might be a better option if you're considering poly, um, hard cell poly or hard cell mono because they can help you to reduce your system cost to help you to um, result in a better IRR. 